We are tired of being analyzed, defined, and represented by people other than ourselves, or worse yet, not considered at all. We are frustrated by the imposed isolation and invisibility that comes from being told to choose either a homosexual or heterosexual identity. Bisexuality is a whole, fluid identity. Do not assume that bisexuality is binary or duogamous in nature. These are some of the opening words of the Bisexual Manifesto, an article in the zine Anything That Moves. It was created by the Bay Area Bisexual Network as a way to both embrace and challenge the stereotypes that haunt bisexuals. The organization itself was incredibly important in bisexual history, still exists to this day as the Bay Area Bi Plus and Pan Network. Their manifesto has become the rallying cry for battle axed bisexuals, a rejection of what everyone else tells them that their sexuality should be. It asserts bisexuality as strong enough to love everyone, regardless of labels. It asserts that bisexuals exist. Battle axed bis protect the legacy of the whole, fluid identity, enough to love beyond the binary. Oh, what's that? You don't know what a battle axe bisexual is? Let's slow down and define some terms. Battle axe bisexuals are a small group within the bisexual community. They believe that micro labels, most notably pansexuality, are dividing the community with useless distinctions instead of keeping us together as a unified whole. Such micro labels include omnisexuality, abrosexuality, and polysexuality, not to be confused with polyamory, which is its own thing. A battle axe bisexual will consider all of those extra labels unnecessary or even harmful to the bisexual community. But why do they feel that way? And why should you care? Isn't this just a meaningless semantic debate that people can shake hands on and go their separate ways? Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple. And I'm going to be going into the reasons why in this video. This will be mostly focused on historical sources, and I'll be skimming through bisexual and pansexual history for the past hundred plus years. Most of LGBT history is quite modern, but the Stonewall riots aren't the be-all end-all. There's so much more to look at, some of it older than you might think. Research on homosexuality all started with the Psychopathia Sexualis. An interesting part of our history, written by Richard Von Kraft Ebing in 1886. Ebing? Ebing? This was the work that coined the term bisexual as referring to people with both homo and heterosexual attraction. Before the psychopathia, bisexual was another term for a hermaphrodite, typically used for plants and some animals. Interestingly, Psychopathia was also the first work to classify homosexuality as an innate tendency, instead of a learned behavior or a vice. I mean, it also classified homosexuality as a mental disorder, but we'll take what we can get. Skip ahead a few decades, and in 1948, homosexual researcher Alfred Kinsey developed his famous Kinsey Scale. If you've ever taken any psychology course ever, you've probably seen this scale. It has heterosexuality on one end and homosexuality on the other, with bisexuality in the middle. There are various points along the scale for how much of a sexual preference you have for the two sexes. Nowadays, Kinsey's scale is viewed with disdain by some LGBT researchers, but his studies were the starting point for accepting bisexuality in modern scientific literature. Since then, there have been many studies on bisexual attraction in the brain. Some of them went extremely well, proving that self-ID'd bisexual men are equally attracted to both men and women. Others, well, not so much. One 2005 study by psychologist Michael Bailey went so badly that the New York Times published a story called Gay, Straight, or Lying. Yeah, they were talking about bisexuals like that. Growth. Stepping back a little, in December 1972, a lesbian feminist magazine called The Lesbian Tide wrote an article about a feminist self-help meeting that occurred in LA. The meeting featured four speakers, a lesbian, a straight woman, a bisexual, and an asexual. The bisexual woman, named Anne, spoke about her experiences with her sexuality. I believe you fall in love with the person, not the sex. 
In the book, Bisexual Politics, Theories, Queries, and Visions, the author references a speech given by Kate Millett in 1974. Millett concluded the speech by saying, the very wealth and humanity of bisexuality itself. For to exclude from one's love any entire group of human beings because of class, age, or race, or religion, or sex is surely poorer, deeply and systematically poorer. Bisexuality has always meant a love without limit, a strong bond that transcends anything that might come in between. The book Bisexual Politics itself, while I disagree with some of the language and politics it swears bisexuals must uphold, is quite an interesting read. I highly recommend it if you have some time to study some LGBT history. It's an early work that goes into what transsexualism and genderqueer meant, and how we should be striving to break down gender roles when it comes to love. I'm surely not as radical as they are, preferring a middle-of-the-road approach, but seeing how similar that the language was back then to words we use on the internet now is an incredible feeling. Such a powerful group of feminists and genderqueers would refuse to use a label that constricted them from loving anyone or anybody based on gender, sex, trans status, or presentation. Various groups and individuals continued to define bisexuality on their own terms throughout the years. For some people, it was as simple as loving men and loving women. Others used it as a way to break down gender roles and completely throw gender out the window. What is a concept as frail as gender when it comes to sexual desire? Some people loved regardless of sexual presentation. For others, it was incredibly important. Regardless of how they defined the word with a thousand meanings, everyone was gathered together under one single community. Bisexual. The love with as many inclusive definitions as people who used it. Alright, let's recap. We know that bisexual has been a word used since the late 1800s to describe multi-spectrum attraction. We know that bisexuality exists scientifically, proven by multiple studies. We know that bisexual can be defined as love regardless of gender, love that takes into account the partner's gender, and love that can cross boundaries. And we know what battle axe bisexuals are, the people who look at historical definitions of bisexuality and continue to keep all of the broad meanings for the label. So, what's the deal with pansexuality? Why did the bisexual community need to come up with a second word for their attractions? Well, to be honest, pansexuality is all over the place when it comes to history. And by all over the place, I don't mean that it was a prominent word that you would see everywhere. I mean that every single person who used it seems to classify it as something different. For example, we have John Calhoun in 1962 who did a study of slutty Norwegian rats, and he described the rats who showed indiscriminate sexual behavior as pansexual. Note how he used the word pansexual to describe the rats, with the word describing sexual behavior and not sexual preference. Now you may think that's me splitting some semantic hairs, but let's get into the details. You are a scientist. You are documenting animal sexual behavior. You see two male rats having sex. Are you going to call those rats gay in your scientific report? No, you would mark it down as engaging in homosexual behavior. Alright, now you see a male rat and a female rat making babies. Would you call those rats straight? No, you would describe their behavior as mating or heterosexual behavior. If you saw a rat screw a male rat, then screw a female rat, you wouldn't call the rat bisexual. The word Calhoun used to describe this behavior was pansexual, a word to describe the sexual acts, not the rat's personal preference. The strangeness of pansexuality's dictionary definition continues. The book The Lesbian in America, published in 1964 and written by Donald Webster Corey, described pansexuality as getting pleasure from oneself, those of one's own sex, and those of the other. So it's just bisexuality plus masturbation, I guess? Did Mr. Corey think that bisexuals don't masturbate? Either way, this is a different way to describe pansexuality than what John Calhoun used, merely two years apart from each other. Now we have the Los Angeles Press in 1968, using the word pansexual as a descriptor of sexual behavior. They published an article about lonesome cowboys and stated that it, like all Warhol films, is pansexual. Not the characters, nor the actors, but the film itself. 
But wait, why does this matter so much anyway? Well, the reason why the definition of pansexuality really matters is because that's what this whole debate hinges on. Bisexuality exists. A bisexual is a person who can stick their hand down someone's pants and be happy with whatever they find. A bisexual is a person who is attracted to people regardless of gender, sex, class, or race. What is a pansexual as regards to a bisexual? Why are there two flags, two communities, two words, two ways of experiencing multi-spectrum attraction? What is the difference, and who split us apart? Believe it or not, this whole modern conversation got started with someone spreading lies on the internet. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? That's right! Someone was a retard in 2002 and decided that bisexuality meant attraction to men and women, while pansexuality meant attraction to men, women, and trans people. Not wanting to miss out on the chance to virtue signal their trans activism and inclusion, more retards on the internet spread the stupid lie around started to declare bisexuality an outdated concept that holds up the gender binary and refuses trans people their rights. You think I'm joking? Here's the live journal from 2002, called I Am Pansexual. It's got all kinds of people commenting their stories, all about how they're attracted to trans people, unlike those bisexuals, who just aren't. For some reason. Could it be... transphobia? No, no, no. It can't be. That'd be kind of, you know, rude to say. So we'll just all imply that they're transphobic by the way that we describe our attraction. After all, we're the ones who are attracted to trans people, not anyone else. Unfortunately for retards on the internet, bisexuals have been writing for decades about just how little they care about the trans or cis status of their partners. 2002, the same year that this pansexual live journal came out, one anonymous bisexual talked to Harvard and said, But really, just like... I can't believe in the heterosexist binary gender system. I have difficulty accepting wholeheartedly any one spiritual tradition. And even earlier than that, in the year 2000, Wendy Curry wrote in Bi Women, the newsletter of Boston Bisexual Women's Network, the message of bisexuality, that people are more than their gender, that we accept all people, regardless of Kinsey scale rating that we embrace people regardless of age, weight, clothing, hairstyle, gender expression, race, religion, and actually celebrate our diversity? That message is my gospel. I travel, write, do websites, all to let people know that the bisexual community will accept you, will let you be who you are, and will not expect you to fit into a neat little gender or sexuality box. Over and over, Dozens, if not hundreds, of examples show that bisexuality has nothing to do with gender or sex for so many people. Love is not about fitting someone into a gender box. Love is not about liking genitals more than personality. Love is expansive. Love is enough. Bisexual is enough. Bisexual is not men and women. Pansexual is not men, women, and trans people. Bisexuality is any combination of femininity, or masculinity, or androgyny, or all of the above. It's holding someone's hand on a summer's night, and knowing that the arms that wrap around you in your dreams could belong to anyone. It's huge. It's bright. It covers all. Pansexuality is a crack in the mold, a split between bisexuals that doesn't need to exist. Bisexual is not men, women, and trans people because it's patently untrue. It's not men, women, and non-binary people because non-binary people can fit along many spectrums of attraction. A straight man can love a femme non-binary. Why can't I, a bisexual, do the same? Pansexual can't be attraction to personality, not genders, because... What the fuck? No, seriously. What the fuck? Why the hell would you ever imply that the only way a bisexual could love someone is if their genitals were the right shape or color or whatever? Or that my partner would need to have a certain haircut or dress in a certain style for me to like them? That's so fucking disrespectful, I don't even know where to start. I don't need to know whether gender plays a factor in my attraction. I can love everyone. What is the point of the word that specifies that gender doesn't matter in my attraction? Is it implying that I, a bisexual, only like a femboy because he's a man? That doesn't make any sense, because I also love women who have many of the traits that femboys have. 
This pansexuality implies that I love the woman for her vagina, her femininity, her long hair, and that I love the man for his dick, his short hair, his masculinity. But I like women with short hair and leather jackets, and men with long hair who wear skirts. How is my attraction based on gender, or sex, or them being male or female, or neither or both? Explain it to me. Actually, on second thought, don't. Don't tell me the limits of my own sexuality because you're too ignorant and uninformed to know what bisexuality means. Stop pretending your community is more progressive while bisexuality is regressive. Stop pretending that we need a new word for the same concept. Stop denying the people who have walked on this earth, felt what you felt, and named their endless love bisexual. It is a term that we reclaimed from someone who called us mentally ill. It is a term that we use for our family. Pansexuality and omnisexuality and polysexuality are all useless labels that split a community apart on very thin lines. Lines that can be crossed by merely taking a few steps. We have no reason to use those words. No reason to split our community into bisexuals and men when the moon is in retrograde and women the rest of the time. We don't need a community of people attracted to personality instead of genitals. We need a united community of multi-spectrum individuals, each of them bisexual, and each of them bringing their own definition to a word that has an endless amount of meaning. Pansexual is a word that can be continued to be used as a description of sexual behavior, but it's not a sexuality. It's not an identity. It's a description. It's time to stop letting fear of the word bisexual tear the multi-spectrum community apart. We are united by one history, one people, one word. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Bisexual is not binary in nature, nor duogamous, nor any more exclusive or inclusive than you need it to be. Bisexuality is enough. And now I'm tired. Good night.